Hi everyone, greetings from South Africa. My name is Nikki and it's wonderful to be a part of this day, Women Who Ever Come. I just love the present tense of this theme. It's not women who have overcome, women who will overcome, but women who overcome today. Milani phoned me a few weeks ago when we spoke about this day. I immediately was in my spirit, was excited about being a part of today. Um, Lord just reminded me of the meaning of my own name. My full name is Nicolette, and one of the meanings of this name is to overcome. Another meaning is victory of the people. Secondly, every time we speak of God's grace, we share our stories of encouragement, and we talk of our breakthroughs we overcome. The Word says that in Revelation 12, 11, we overcome by the blood of the Lamb and the word of our testimony. So today, ladies, as we share um, our stories, we overcome. Our scripture is filled with many extraordinary women who have overcome so many things in their lives. Today, I want to stand still at the story of a woman who might not be that well known. We don't often speak about her and she could probably be seen as insignificant. Her name is Hagar. We know the story of how God promised Sarah and Abraham that they would have a son. In Genesis chapter 16, we read the story of how Sarah in actual fact became impatient, waiting upon the Lord to fulfill this promise of giving them an heir. She then suggested to her husband Abraham to take for himself their maid servant, the Egyptian slave girl Hagar as a wife, in order for them to have this heir. Abram did that, and when Hagar became pregnant, everything just went pear-shaped in this family. Things became so bad in the relationship between Sarah and Hagar that Hagar eventually ran away. That just seems so familiar to us, uh, to me, ladies. We often become impatient, waiting on God to fulfill a promise. We then intervene in our own strength, and things just does not work out the way we had hoped for. Hagar was basically known as a slave girl, and I think um, probably labeled as the other woman. We know um, how that feel, feels to be labeled, to have some or other stigma attached to who we are. This could stem from, from where we're born, how we look, how we speak, and even from a condition or disease that we suffer from. Even more of us today know the weight of being enslaved to something. It could be an addiction, it could be an obsession to food, fitness, our career. Um, women today are often enslaved to the standard or the demands of society. And I was no different. 13 years ago, um, we had a little baby girl called Annika. And soon after she was born, I started to suffer from anxiety and depression. I, um, yeah, at that time, my husband just entered full-time ministry in a new province in South Africa. We knew nobody. I held down a full-time job by trade. I'm a pharmacist. And um, yeah, I had a toddler, also a little boy whom um, we've been fostering for a while at that stage. Heinrich entered the ministry. I had this newborn, tried to hold down this full-time job. And um, as you can imagine, soon my walls just came off. Amongst all of this, I tried to find myself, find my feet um, as a new pastor's wife. What was most debilitating at that time in my life was the shame. I could not stand the thought of people um, thinking I cannot cope. Um, or even knowing that I had emotions and, and, and terribly dark thoughts um, for a woman of faith. Not, not even to mention the fact that I'm a pastor's wife. What kick-started my, my journey of healing to freedom, and I do emphasize journey, was the fact that I had to admit first to myself that I needed help. And by help, I mean medication. Yes, you heard right, medication. By that time, we were praying and we continued praying and we, we put around um, me, um, all the support we knew how to do, 
we approached the situation in, in a spiritual way. We had practical support around me until one day my husband just calmly and confidently said, if I had suffered from any other medical condition, we would not hesitate to get medication. Why would this be different? So we went to see a doctor and my postnatal depression and anxiety was confirmed. I started on antidepressant medication. This journey lasted for about two years. And in this time, uh, while taking the medication and my serotonin levels were managed in that way, I could experience a physiological calmness and really a stillness in my soul which enabled me to heal emotionally. I was really very ashamed to admit, especially in, um, in Christian circles, that I needed something to cope with life. But I must tell you, while on the medication and having that, that calmness, that physiological calmness, that, that state of mind, I could hear the Lord clearly. I experienced Jesus Christ for myself as the one who spoke and calmed the storms of my emotion. I experienced Jesus Christ for myself as the one who spoke and brought order into the chaos of my mind. The word says in, in um, Psalm 46, uh, verse 10, that be still my soul and know that he is God. My, my, my soul, my, my emotions, my will, my intellect, my reasoning could be still in order for me to hear what the Creator was saying over me. I could hear his voice clearly. I, can, I never so much um, relied on the substance as I relied on the Creator for my healing. I never so much relied on the, on the created thing as I relied on the Creator to set me free. For a very long time, I was my own worst critic. I, um, yeah, women, I think, I think you can, can actually um, identify with me that we are often very hard on ourselves, even though we have um, quite a lot of patience and even grace with others. The more I spoke of God's goodness and I blessed the Lord, I saw how He redeemed my life from destruction and filled my life with good things. Psalm 103 says it so beautifully. It says, bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me, bless His holy name. And when I mean all, I often sang to the Lord from a really dark place. All that was within me, the, the, the not so beautiful and the positive things, bless the Lord, bless His holy name. Psalm 103 goes further and it says, Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all His benefits. The more I worship God and the more I, I openly started to speak about um, the reality of my life at home, um, my life at large and my faith in God and walking in the light, I became free of shame and I had victory over the lies of the enemy. The more I sang particularly scripture to God, even from, from a very dark place, really high praises at that time, I saw how He forgave my sins, how He healed my diseases, how He redeemed my life from destruction and filled my life with good things. One of the good things that the Lord came to fill my life was He opened my eyes to see as I, as I spoke of His goodness, as I, as I shared how I sometimes had very bad days, and as I, as I spoke of um, even the, the, the good things of, 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 of His presence in my life, the, the smallest um, victory, sleeping through the night, not waking up with, with a headache of being in a terrible mood, not even understanding that, um, Testifying when I did not scream at my children, just every little thing that I, that I testified about, the Lord showed me the more I'm vulnerable, the more I'm honest, the more I speak with confidence about His goodness, He redeems my life from destruction. Um, he fills my life with good things. Four years after um, we had Anika, I gave birth to Katie. 
And the Lord graced my life, whereby I, after her birth, did not again suffer from postnatal depression. Glory to God. But what does this all have to do with Hagar, you might ask? When I was suffering from depression and anxiety, it really felt like I was wandering in the wilderness. I was very, very desperate. I felt so alone, mostly tired and, and overwhelmed. And like Hagar, I often just wanted to run away from my circumstances and once or twice even contemplated ended my life. But I cried out to, to God from a desperate place in my distress. And as the word promises, when we cry out to Him, He doesn't only hear us, he also sees us. God himself gave his angels, as in the case of Hagar, charge over me. He himself, I often experienced, relentlessly came after my heart. I remember countless times actually when I wanted to just end all the darkness that was overwhelming my life, the, the, the feelings of just being so um, helpless. And every time our faithful God intervened, He sent His Word, He sent somebody, even sometimes a message, sometimes a person, sometimes His presence just fills the place where I was. Jeremiah 15, 16 says, Your words were found and I ate them. Your words were a joy to my heart and the rejoicing um, of my heart. Your words were joy and the rejoicing of my heart because I'm called by your name, the name of the Lord of hosts. I mentioned the, um, that the meaning of my name is overcomer, but it doesn't matter what the meaning of your name is because the word promises that we are called by the name of the Lord of hosts. We all know um, when we intervene, when Christ intervenes and we, and we encounter Him for ourselves, He changes our name. He changed the name of Saul to Paul. He changed the name of Sarah, he to Sarah. He changed the name of Jacob, the surplanter, the one who lied to Israel. God does not only hear when we cry out to Him, He also sees. We just saw in Genesis chapter 16 from verse 7 onwards that the Lord um, saw Hagar. I want to encourage you today that He is not just the one who hears, He is the one who sees. He is the one who sees your hurt. He is the one who sees your heart. He is the one who sees your suffering. It doesn't matter in what wilderness um, experience or season you might be today. Know that our Father in heaven gives His angels charge over you. He sees you. He is the one who sees you. He is that living water. He is that stream in your desert place. Do you today in the wilderness of your pain and suffering, in the wilderness of your bondage, do you see the one who sees you? Let's just take a minute or two and ask the Holy Spirit to open our spiritual eyes so that we can see the one who sees us. Father, I thank you for your faithfulness, Lord. Thank you, Lord, that when we are wandering in the wilderness of our, of our um, chaos, God, wilderness, Lord God, of whatever desert circumstances we find ourselves in, Lord, you give your angels charge over us. Thank you, Lord God, that your word cannot return void without accomplishing, Lord, what you have set out for it to do. I pray, Lord, that in the few moments that we do have, God, we'll be able to quiet our hearts, that our spiritual ears will be open, God, to hear when you speak to us, Lord. I pray, Lord God, for the courage, God, to speak up and to speak out. I pray, God, Holy Spirit, that you will come and open our spiritual eyes that we might see the one who sees us in the mighty name of Jesus.